The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us. We will get started with the webinar in about two minutes. Hello everyone, and thank you all for joining us. Today's webinar is Improved Scratch and Abrasion Resistance in Polymers and is presented by Silma. Your presenter today is Dr. Camilla Cardelli. Dr. Cardelli completed his PhD from PZ University in 2000. Previously, he was a contact, contract researcher at the National Council of Research of Italy for studies in polymer chemistry. Since 2013, he is the technical consultant of Silma where he is an expert in polymer chemistry and compounding. Having published more than 20 papers in international journals and magazines, along with speeches at an international exhibition and congresses. My name is Abby Pierre with UL, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Please send us your questions by typing them in the question box located on your screen. Our panelists will answer them at the end of the presentation. We are recording today's event and we'll send you links by email to ulprospector.com when it has been posted. Now, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Dr. Cardelli. Would you like to begin? Hello to everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Camilo Cardelli, as I already said, and welcome from the beautiful Italy. I'm going to present you the additives Silma designed in the last 10 years to improve scratch and abrasion resistance of plastics. This is the index of presentation, together with the basic chemical properties of uh, polydimethylsiloxane additives. I will uh, show you the results on our R&D activity and uh, some case study to show you the efficiency of the Silma additives. But before everything, I want to show you a video of Silma, which is located near to Florence, one of the most beautiful city in the world. Let me show you the Selma.
Okay. So I hope you enjoy our video and uh, let's go ahead uh, with uh, some milestones about uh, Silma story. Silma is a relatively young company because uh, we have uh, just 20 years, but our background is coming since uh, 40 years ago. Barbini family founded the company uh, Simco and they also sold the company to Amkel and now they started again on 20 years ago for a special company with Silma. Società Italiana Materiale, Lavorazione Materie Plastiche Affini. As you can see, in 20 years, uh, we did a lot of steps. The first important step was to move from a color master badge to high performance additives like a flame retardant and stabilizer. Flame retardant is a top, hot topic for the European market, for global market of plastics, and we are mastering that. And then on 2000, 10, we start to develop special policy loxan additives. Uh, six years later, we extend our technology to chain extender and branching agent for polyester and polyamide, where we are one of the key players to recover polyamide and, and uh, polyester PET. And finally, two years ago, three years ago, we start to develop also CLAN additives in a new brand, brand new plant taking um, uh, action, uh, taking the, um, doing the reaction inside to reactor for liquids. So Silma is working about polysiloxane since 2010 and is investing to produce uh, all type of uh, physical form additive. We have a liquid, which basically is the original form of the silane and siloxane, polydimethylsiloxane. We have powder, powder uh, with a 50 or 70 or 90 percent active principle as well as in pellet form. On the 2018 as I already mentioned we started with the processing of the CLAN plant to do reaction between different CLANs and to modify the existing CLAN to produce tailor-made products and also we develop a unique reactive processing to produce pellets. We don't transform liquids in pellets by absorption uh, of the liquids in the porous additive, in the porous granules. When we are presenting our pellets that you can see in the picture, these are extruded. So all Silma additives are extruded in the double screw extruder. So are completely processed and mixed, not just physically absorbed. Just to let you have an idea, when you compound, when you produce a silan or high mole a low molecular weight polydimethyl siloxane in this way, like Silma does, you have a homogeneous material, homogeneous plastic, no migration, and in case of silan, much less lost in the volatiles. So the final material is really an hybrid between plastic and silan or polydimethyl siloxane. The starting point of my presentation is the chemical properties of polymethylsiloxane or polysiloxane in general. You can see how many properties has this special polymer. Everything starts from the very strong energy of the bond between silicon and oxygen in the main backbone of polysiloxane. This very strong chemical link uh, gives to the polymers extremely high thermal resistance, thermal stability. So polysiloxanes can really stay till very high temperature for a long time. Also, this uh, bond are flexible. They can turn all around. Rotation is very free. So all these chains are very flexible and they keep this flexibility till down to minus 80 degrees. So you can imagine <laughs> a polymer that is flexible till extremely low temperature. Also, what is uh, specific of uh, polysiloxane is they are almost not compatible with any other polymer. They don't have strong uh, reactive groups. So they are almost incompatible with every other polymer. So very easy for them is to migrate and to move around. It's uh, very, very difficult to mix uh, polysiloxane with any other polymer. This is make our job, our work more difficult to produce for you 50 or 60 or 80% active principle additive. But at the same time, 
this strong tendency to migrate uh, allowed to policy like saying to move at the surface and to change the quality of the interface between the plastic and the metal and the plastic in the air. There is also a very high uh, hydrophobicity of this polymer, one of the most hydrophobic additive uh, polymer we know with a very, very low surface tension. And finally, which is also an important application of uh, polysiloxane, uh, they have a very nice behavior in the flame test. Uh, they have a relatively low uh, PCS, power calorific specific. They are composed only by silicon, oxygen, and carbon. So they don't have any nitrogen or any halogen inside. So no smokes or very, very low smokes and white smokes, no toxic fume and gas. So all the additive coming from polysiloxane has a very, very nice behavior in the flame retardant formulation, and they are used for that. And finally, at least, but not least, <laughs> they are non-toxic, environmental friendly, and not water soluble. So they are not bioaccumulated in the ambient. They are not uh, absorbed by um, organic, uh, biodiversity. But uh, of course, there is not only one type of uh, polysiloxane. The polysiloxane can be modified, can be um, changed uh, thanks to many different types of uh, reactive group or uh, of uh, functional groups. This is the list that you can, you can imagine. You can have it. the alkyl, which is the hydrophobic group, it can be C8 or C16. Hydroxyl, the same group, OH, which is in the alcohol, which is uh, make this uh, functionality reactive with polyester and polyurethane. Alkoxy groups, they are reactive versus sealants uh, and versus minerals. Carboxyl, which are reactive versus basic minerals and polyamides and polyester. Amino makes the polysiloxane interacting or reacting with the anhydrides, polyesters, and polyamide. The hydride, this is a, a H hydrogen um, atom linked to the silicon, then make possible to cross-link thanks to the platinum catalyst to create 3D uh, structures, tri-dimensional structure of uh, polysiloxane. Vinyl, vinyl groups, this is very common is uh, suitable for radicals as well as uh, platinum curing and sulfur curing as well. Epoxy group, they are very reactive versus polyamide and polyesters. And finally, acrylics for radical curing, peroxide, radiation curing. So as you can see, in front, in, in, in the siloxane, in the polysiloxane world, there is really unlimited possibility to modify the behavior the interaction and the reaction of this uh, polysiloxane versus the final polymer, the final mineral, to change the properties. And this is what Silma did in these many years. The variable is not only the type of functional group, but also the number of functional group, and also the position of the functional group, because the reactivity of the functional group is different if you have a group at the end of the chain, at the terminal of the molecular backbone, or in the middle. And this different reactivity, it's clear evident in the efficiency of the final products. Let's have a look uh, at the glance of the Silmas portfolio that I already mentioned to you is for many applications. Today, we focus on abrasion and scratch resistance, but you can see how many applications are suitable for uh, for uh, polysiloxane additives. At the bottom, you see the halogen-free flame retardant compounds for cable, where uh, Silma is one of the market leader, thanks to the development of specific additive to make a flame retardant, halogen-free, and self-extinguished cable compound. But uh, you can also see the other applications like uh, um, mineral glass fiber fillet polypropylene for in this case, scratch resistance. This is one of the topics of today. You can see wear resistance polyamide 6 and polyamide 66. In this case, we use IPN, interpenetrating network technology, 3D, three-dimensional 
polysiloxane hybrid thermoplastic polymer, as well as uh, low friction polyamide 6 and polyamide 66 to reduce the friction coefficient between polyamide compound and uh, itself to reduce the wearing the over during the, the work. On the right side of the, uh, of the slide, you can see the application in shoes, which is uh, has been developed for cross-linked expanded EVA for shoes, the very extremely light and forward EVA for shoes. Everyone likes the flexible and light in the shoes, and then the problem comes from the resistance to abrasion, the life of the shoes. Uh, for TPU compound as well, can be used as well as in styrenic in TP, SCBS, SPS compound for shoes. Uh, basically, you can see many, many additives that Silma create based on polysiloxane and silane. Uh, one of the most successful products is also Silma Link AM1536, which is a branching agent for polyamide and especially for PET. So every time you need to recover it, to recycle, or to increase the molecular weight of this polyester and polyamide, SilmaLink allowed you to give new life to recycled scraps. Let's go in the scratch resistance, which is an important topic of today, because when the usual polymers, especially polyolefin, like a polypropylene, but also other type of polymer, have been loaded with a lot of minerals, like a calcium carbonate or talc, uh, the scratch resistance becomes an issue because uh, it's easy to make a sign on the, on the surface of this compound, especially when they are black. And in automotive industry, this is uh, an, uh, an important uh, issue to solve. Uh, I introduce here our Silma process AP1142A+. And just to show you how we develop it, we tested in the polypropylene compound, homopolymer, uh, fill it with the 30% of talc. This is a fine talc. And of course, we did the compound black to put in evidence the issue coming from the scratch. This is the testing machine, the scratch hardness tester we set up in our laboratory. Uh, as you know, there are so many different uh, scratch tests and uh, Silma cannot have, uh, in our, we are not a certification <laughs> laboratory for this type of test, but we use this test for our R&D activity. Yes, this is the scratch. Uh, of course, in this case, we use the test tip according to Volkswagen, but we can use any other. And uh, our purpose is to do comparative tests. So our way to go is to take the original compound, the modified compound with different dosage of uh, Silma additives. Then we compare how this, uh, this, uh, <coughs> how this modified compound uh, resists or not to the, to the scratching process. If you change the equipment, if you change the standard, of course, you can have different results. But what, what is important for Silma is to see which one is working better and which is the dosage at which the efficiency uh, step up. Because uh, when you had one or two percent, maybe you see a little effect, then we go to three or four percent, your big effect. And this, uh, let me say, this uh, uh, limit dosage is depend of the compounding way, the compound you select, the test method. But if uh, we adapt, we adopt a, a regular testing way method in a comparative way, we can easily check how compound of Silma perform in comparison to the existing product that uh, are in the market, competitor grades. Uh, or how Silma can outperform this type of process material. So the case study goes uh, forward in the microscope. We did uh, the scanning electron microscopy, the analysis of the scratch. You can see in the left the analysis of secondary electrons of the scanning electron microscope. So you, in, the, in the 
upper part, you see the scratched surface. In the bottom part, you can see the untouched surface. And it's evident the uh, impact of the scratched tip on the surface. On the right picture, we have the same compound tested in the same equipment, but with additional 3% of uh, AP1142A+. This is clear evident the, the effect is to reduce the, the scratching, the removal of the surface uh, layer of polymer on top of specimen, which much better uh, visual effect in the, in, the, in the looking of the scratch. But the, in the same technology, in the same uh, analysis, scanning electron microscopy, we can also analyze the back scattering electrons. This is uh, uh, um, allowed us to see uh, a bit deeper, around two, four microns deep, so just behind the surface. And this te technique is sensitive to the atomic number of the element. And uh, as I told you, in this compound, we have talc. Talc is a magnesium silicate. So the molecular weight of silicon and magnesium is much higher than uh, carbon, the carbon which is present into the polypropylene. So in the white area, in this picture, you can see there is more talc than into the um, darker area. And you can see, especially in the left picture, that after the scratching, you have more talc, which is came out at the surface. In the case of addition of uh, silicon additive from Silma, uh, you have less talc Uh, analysis by ATR, attenuated total reflection, infrared of the surface. And this is nice to see the green uh, signal is the original compound, polypropylene plus 30% of talc. As you see at around the 1000 um, wave number, you have the signal of the talc, of the silicate. And this is a, is a relatively intense signal. But if you scratch the surface, so in, in, the, in the point where scratching occurred, you can see the high, high level of, uh, of um, talc you can see. Look how big jump you have with a blue line where the scratched surface of polypropylene plus talc. When you do the same process, the same analysis, scratching on the polypropylene plus talc plus a silma uh, additive, you see the signal of talc is in the middle. So you have some effect of the scratching, putting in surface the talc, but not as much as in the same compound without any addition additive. So this method is a way that we also use to quantify the efficiency to give a number, uh, not just a picture to see if it's more white or, or, or just uh, visually, but we give numbers how much is evident the talc after the scratching process. And this allowed us to bring forward our R&D uh, activity. And of course, I mentioned the Silma uh, process, uh, AP1142+, plus, because this is one of the best seller of Silma in this application. Going in direction of uh, abrasion resistance, uh, this is a different story. Uh, I focus here in the, the case study about uh, the rubber, rubber for shoes sole, which is one of the most important applications. The strategy in this case is the, to use the migration of uh, silicon additive to the surface. And uh, thanks to this uh, incompatible nature, of the polysiloxane with the uh, uh, rubber, uh, they move to the surface and change the coefficient of friction and change the abrasion resistance at the interface between the rubber and the floor. Of course, we want durability of this effect. We want a permanent surface properties. We don't want that uh, just putting some additive we have for maybe 20 days 
the nice uh, um, low abrasion uh, uh, proper uh, high abrasion uh, resistance material and then after few months totally lost so it's important that the surface is fixed and there is in this case also conflict of interest if we uh, put too much additive too much silicon especially low molecular weight silicon oil for example we have a um, competition between gripping versus abrasion in the salt so uh, in, in theory if you put uh, too much silicon, you cannot even walk. You sleep completely. completely. Also, recently, uh, most of the producer of shoes they want a very, very exotic or colorful so, um, shoes. And instead to put uh, to use a colored rubber, they apply color on the surface. And uh, in this case, the presence of the let me say the wrong type of silicon additive or too much silicon additive is, is uh, making it impossible to apply glue or to apply color on top of the of the rubber so the, the point is too much silicon additive can affect the adhesion properties of paints when you want to to make adhesion with the lead or with other parts of the shoes or is impossible to color because when you apply some uh, some paint on the, on the plastic, on the rubber, it will be easily debonded. And finally, which is also every time important for the business, cost performance must be optimized. These are um, some example of the application for conveyor belt as well as the shoes. But I will focus on shoes, which is also our actual best market. In the case of abrasion of the shoes, we use uh, in our laboratory DIN equipment with different kind of uh, sandpaper and on the right you can see the expanded eva coming from uh, from uh, cross-linked eva for shoes that uh, show how uh, why it's so difficult to have nice abrasion in such a format compound yeah the case study has been done in two types the first time, the first type of additive is the AY1142A. As you can easily understand, 1142 is a kind of a number that you can find in all our products. The first two letters means A additive, and the second letter is a, a kind of a, an indication of the polymer where this material is used. So in case of polypropylene, it was AP, in case of Styrenix uh, SEBS compound is AY. So in this case, we compare. These are data from, uh, from our laboratory, but also confirmed by our customers. A TP compound based on SEBS, 70 show A, uh, with a very low, relatively low density. Not very linear. Uh, at one percent, you have uh, from three hundred to two seventy. At three percent, the, the the delta improvement is uh, is bigger. You have two twenty from two seventy to two twenty, and even higher when you use five percent. So it is not a linear effect. Sometimes one or two percent uh, you don't see so much, but then when you go above a certain limit, immediately you have a. <laughs> uh, a relevant improvement and this is the same but not in scbs or tp but in a cross-linked eva format eva in this case is a is a test not from our lab but is from the customer laboratory and uh, they tested our silma process av 1910 in comparison to a standard let me say polymethylsiloxane or high molecular weight silicon uh, compound master batch from competition. And you see, for a very light and uh, flexible XL EVA 45 show A, you can see the increase, huge increase of the performances for Silma process 
AV1910. And this is due to the reactive nature of uh, AV1910. Non-reactive uh, silicon additives cannot take advantage from the cross-linking. In this case, cross-linking is occurred by peroxide. But uh, if the silicon additive is also part of uh, the taking part of the radical reaction, the final homogeneity is higher, the performances are higher, but also the permanent, the duration of the efficiency is uh, almost forever, thanks to the uh, chemical bond created between the AV1910 and the EVA matrix. This is a, a, big, a big slide um, mentioning uh, more or less a summary of the surface properties that we want to be permanent. The, the, the starting point is that the highly migrating, low molecular weight, the basic polydimethylsilosane, commonly, call, commonly called silicon oil, gives, of course, benefit into abrasion resistance, but only is temporary, just after the injection and just after a few times. And uh, Silma studied a lot uh, deeply how to make uh, permanent the migration, the surface performances of modified rubber. And there are different technology depending on the polymers. As we see in the case study one, we have a, a Styrenix, SEBS compound. In this case, uh, we are in front to not a reactive polymer. Of course, this can be through also for a POE, polyester elastomers, for polypropylene flexible compound, for all polymers that don't have any reactive groups to make a reaction with the polysiloxane. So in case of not reactive polymers, how we can fix in a stable way and, let me say, forever, the properties of the surface. And the strategy are two, what, what we developed in our laboratory, in our company, high or extra high molecular weight polydimethylsiloxane, in this case, extra high molecular weight rubber, that is a, uh, very difficult to handle and to use. But in this case, this high molecular weight, when you mix to your compound, uh, you will have a physical entanglement with your polymer. So even if there is no chemical bond between the polysiloxane and your polymer, you will have, in any case, a kind of physical bonding. It's like a, a spaghetti that they cannot, you cannot have one single spaghetti because they are all together mixed in a kind of coil. So this is a, a phenomenon um, due to the high molecular weight. Or we did also a reactive processing in our uh, extruders, producing two-dimensional or three-dimensional structure of polysiloxane chain. So we, we force, we build up a cross-linked, semi-cross-linked structure of polysiloxane inside to a thermoplastic carrier. Can be polystyrene, can be polypropylene, can be polyethylene, can be EVA, can be the poly polyamide. But the final structure is 3D. So it cannot move anymore without the bringing, without uh, the, the bonding with the, with the polypropylene user. So in this case, 3 or 3, 3D and 2D structure are also guaranteed permanent surface properties. In this case, the, the problem can be the migration because if the 3D structure is too strong, you have a fantastic wear resistant compound, you have fantastic impact properties of your compound, but the surface properties uh, need a lot of addition of this additive because the migration is limited. Um, different in the case when we go for functional policy. Shoes cross linked by peroxide, as we already see. The reactive polysiloxane containing reactive group versus peroxide will be fixed during the cross linking of a compound of the custom EPDM compound for conveyor belt, for example. 
also SBR compound for the conveyor belt, styrene, cutaline, and rubber. PE, EVA, POA for cable, which are cross-linked by silane and peroxide or electron beam, also in cable. There are many applications that need uh, scratch resistance <laughs> in the electrical vehicles, materials, as well as uh, in the traditional cable, there is abrasion. But uh, we are able, we, are, we have uh, enough chemical technology and the chemical background to modify, to modify our material and tailor made the product for our customers. Okay, coming to the conclusion of the presentation, I can show you here more or less a summary about the additive of Silma for scratch resistance plastics and abrasion resistant plastic. All are Pellets form, free flowing, and more than one year shelf life and ROS and rich compliant and no toxic. Okay, we also have in powder and in liquid. surface properties. It will modify other properties. Sometimes you want silicon is inside, for example, for <laughs> flexibility at low temperature, or you want for the flame retardancy, or you want for impact strength. Sometimes you want the silicon stay inside, but for the purely surface properties, the maximum is 100% of the silicon additive go on the surface. So we need to, to study the way to allow the, the material to go at the surface as much as possible to reduce the dosage of our additive. Then we study the right functional groups in the siloxane bond backbone to control the reaction or interaction with the polymers and minerals of plastics and rubber compounds. Of course, the more and more mineral you put in your compound, the more chance you have that the interaction between the mineral and the silicon exists. So you can reduce the efficiency of the surface properties because the, the migration of silicon uh, additive is reduced. Also, we select the best thermoplastic polymer in terms of molecular weight and crystallinity in order to have stable, not sticky pellets, easy and fast dispersion for you, our customer, and proper melting and crystallization. This is crucial, very important also, because the final good should be the, the, the silicon can move through the material only when the compound is melted. So there is enough uh, um, uh, chain mobility to allow the silicon to move at the surface. But uh, when once it's crystallized, once it's cooled down, no chance anymore to, to have migration. That's why it's important to control the properties of our thermoplastic partner for the silicon additive. Also, we developed the interpenetrated network technology, IPN, to create a new thermoplastic poly siloxane hybrid materials. You cannot distinguish anymore where is the silicon additive and where is the thermoplastic additive. It can be PET, can be polyamide, can be PP. Because the, the 3D, the IPN structure, in practice create a new block compound, block polymer. And also, what we are happy to, to, to inform you, we, thanks to the cooperation with our additives year by year in the last 10 years, so we, we have been able to reduce the dosage of our additives to make most cost competitive and to have a higher specific efficiency. So I want to, to thank you about your time and the, the attention you dedicate to, to my presentation to Silma additives. Uh, just a, a couple of uh, final slides to introduce uh, our team, myself, 
and uh, Serkan Bayramin, sales manager of Silma. You will see, we'll talk later with him. And just to remind you that we have uh, also uh, implemented our digital strategy to be next to you, even in pandemic situation or where, when it's not possible to travel and to visit you. And we have our YouTube channel as well as our page in LinkedIn. Thank you so much for your time and your question and answer will be very, uh, sorry, your questions will be very welcome for me. Thank you. Hi everyone. As we move into the Q&A portion of our webinar, please remember to put your questions in the question box located on your screen and we will get through as many of them as possible. Uh, joining Dr. Cardelli today will be Sir Khan, who is one of your customer representatives. Sir Khan, can you tell the audience a bit about yourself and how they can reach you? Hello, everybody. Thank you, Camillo. Thank you, Abby. Uh, I would like to thank to all attendees that they are attending at the moment. It was more than 130 people were listening and watching us. I, I, I am sending my special thanks to them. I am Serkan. I am the sales manager of Silma. I do the commercial things and sales activities in Silma and uh, assisting to Camillo Cardelli. We are cooperating together with him. So in the end, uh, this is, from my side, it's a little bit technical webinar. I know that you may have the more technical questions and all your questions will be very welcome. Please share with your opinions, feedbacks, questions with us, commercial or technical, whatever you want. Please share with your feedbacks and questions uh, to improve our, our properties, to improve our network service quality. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, I'm going now to, to give some time to reply to your questions that are coming quickly and fast. Uh, I want to uh, underline that uh, uh, I will reply now to a short question or relatively simple question where it's enough a uh, couple of minutes to reply, but uh, any question will be replied by us by email. So uh, put here all questions you are curious to know, you want to understand, because uh, we will reply not only today by voice, but uh, one by one question by email in the next days. So let's go into, uh, of course, uh, Elmar wants to know if uh, our presentation will be available for everyone. Yes, this presentation will be available in the UL Prospector uh, platform. So everyone, every time you want to uh, see again, watch again, you can do, and also you can spread to your friends because even people not registered today can register and see uh, free in the future. Um, how do you, call, uh, sorry, I missed the question because the question are, <laughs> are coming too many. How do you correlate the non-polar structure of policy loxane to the coefficient of friction? Yeah, this is a, a chemical basic uh, questions. Um, the, 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 the friction is always due to a uh, few properties. One is the internal cohesion of the uh, material. Because a polysiloxane goes at the surface, it creates a kind of a little layer, micrometric layer. Um, and the, the chain, molecular chain of silicon, polymersiloxane, they have a very, very poor adhesion. It's one because they have a very low polarity, a very low interaction, relatively easy is to slip on top of the surface. Uh, you have sometimes a very strong uh, a grip, uh, very high uh, co friction coefficient when you have a very polar polymer, like in case of uh, polyurethane, for example, or in case of uh, a very soft and very rubbery material because the surface modify and they have a kind of elastic uh, behavior. So uh, it's it's a complex question I, I like to, to reply later in, in the email. Um, which product uh, can you recommend to improve abrasion resistance in the TPV, a PDM, a polypropylene, PE peroxide uh, cross-linked? So all TPV, in this case, I call this TPV, like the customer correctly, as an external um, matrix, continuous phase, which is a polypropylene, and a dispersed phase, which is rubber usually plasticized rubber, a PDM cross-linked. 
one way is sulfur, one way is peroxide, one way also a formaldehyde a type of crosslink. In this case, the additive to improve surface properties is the same as for polypropylene. So, Silma process AL1142+, plus, because what we need to modify is the properties of a polypropylene continuous matrix, not the EPDM, which is the dispersed phase. When we put uh, additive polypropylene-based polypropylene targeted uh, Silma um, process additive, we will modify the continuous phase, which is the external phase of the TPV. Um, for PP, 40% talc filled, uh, which uh, scratch and abrasion resistant additive you recommend is the same. For polypropylene is 1142 uh, plus. Plus means uh, has been a, a second step improved to create as much as possible mole high molecular weight. Of course, 40% talc, we are becoming a lot of uh, issue due to the britness because uh, the, the cohesion of your compound is decreased by the, the talc above 20%. So the, the addition of talc is positive, 5, 10, 15%. So you, in this case, talc is in a reinforcing filler that make a higher modulus and also higher mechanical properties, even better impact, especially for fine talc. But if you go above 15, 20, 30, or here as mentioned in the question, 40% is becoming tough, tough topic. So I believe that to optimize this compound, we need both the Silma process AL1142 plus and also some silicon oil, basic silicon oil to, uh, let me say, wet this talc and reduce the negative impact into processability. I see also another interesting question about uh, how the Silma additives um, influence the processability and the, the molding process or the compounding process. Oh, this is, uh, is one of the cases when there is no drawbacks. Uh, silicon additives, uh, both silicon oil as well as silicon gum or as well as 3D uh, tridimensional IPN, they have extremely nice rheology. So it's, it's a, a very easy and very simple to process. Um, almost all additive from Silma reduce the viscosity and increase the speed of injection or the output of the twin uh, skew extruder compounding. So uh, we use also in cable industry to reduce the viscosity without affecting the flame retardant properties, the silicon additives, because in this case, more silicon compound additive from Silma, viscosity lower the pressure in the head, higher the, the productivity of the, of the line. Uh, the same is for injection molding. Uh, of course, uh, we are talking about the dosage between uh, 1%, 2%, 3%. Uh, sometimes we also use 5%, but not more. Also because to produce this additive is expensive. So the final cost of the additive will impact a lot in the, the final cost of the compound. So very rarely we tested at more than 5%. And in the range between 0 and 5%, processing, is improved uh, together with the surface properties as well as the impact properties at low temperature. Uh, other question, are your uh, polysiloxane additives also work in transparent polymers? Yeah, this is a very tough topic. As you know, the, the polysiloxane are, in, are not mixable with any other polymer. So when you add to any polymer, you always affect the transparency. There are some very, very specific polysiloxanes, which are produced by two or three multinational companies. They are studied to be transparent, but at dosage of 1%. So let me say that actually uh, there is no uh, demand or no chance for Silma to provide a transparent uh, polysiloxane additive for you. Uh, of course, uh, all the additives to, um, I mentioned it before, CLAN additive or chain branching additive or uh, chain standard additive we use for PET. In that case, the transparency is uh, maintained, sometimes even improved, 
But in that case, uh, the materials are not based on the policy of SAIN, RC lane or anhydride or reactive um, uh, ingredients that are perfectly mixed with the, the PET and then is a regradated the PET to the, for example, viscosity enough to produce a, a laminate or to produce bottle again uh, without affecting the transparency. What else? Uh, are the compounds opaque? Uh, are possible to have a colorless uh, grade? Yeah, all the compounds, as I mentioned, are opaque but white. So you can do any color, of course, but transparency is something that is, uh, is difficult to do. What amount do you recommend to use in TPV, a PDM, PP, XL? Oh, 3% uh, is always our standard recommendation. In laboratory, when you have different uh, possibilities and you can do maybe a few kg of each trials, we always recommend uh, to use uh, 1, 3, and 5%. Uh, at 5%, of course, uh, they have a fantastic surface properties, but uh, you need to balance with uh, the price and you have to balance uh, with adhesion of the glue for shoes, for example, or the capacity to be painted because uh, when it's too much, sometimes it's too much. Uh, to improve shine in PVC, no, no. In PVC, we tested the many times uh, additives, uh, but uh, when we are talking about PVC, I talk mostly about cable. Cable is where Silma uh, is the market where Silma is uh, is a more protagonist. And uh, in PVC, there are many other solutions to have a nicer surface uh, other than uh, silicon additives. So they are. In the PVC, you can use, uh, um, we have in powder, AQ1142, which is used not to improve the surface, but to reduce the smoke emission. As I mentioned to you, the silicon additives has a very nice behavior in the fire, especially they reduce the dripping and they reduce the smoke release. So in PVC, there are many countries demanding a green, environmental friendly, fire safe PVC. And in this case, of course, you need to remove as much as possible antimony trioxide, and you need to compensate the, the flame retardancy and the smoke suppression with other additives. The zinc borate is used as well, together in synergies with the AQ1142 silicon additive in powder. Also, uh, zinc stannate is used in combination. In this case, especially in American market, when they have a plenum cable, uh, AQ1142A in powder will be a nice synergy to improve processing of this PVC cable without affecting the, the flame retardant property, but at the opposite, improving the results in the fire test. Let um, me have, oh, somebody called me by name, uh, one of the friends, one of the customers. Most of our customers are on, connected today. I'm very thankful to them. Uh, some question I don't see completely, so I need to expand the column. Okay. Which thermoplastics are you using to support uh, your pellets grade? Oh, as I mentioned during my webinar, we can really use any type of uh, uh, basic thermoplastic. Uh, we try to minimize the number of a carrier. Um, but uh, of course, uh, all the polyolefins are available, or the um, polycondensation polymer are available. Uh, for example, for some specific uh, polymer, which is difficult to use uh, as, as a carrier, uh, we use a, a compatible polymer. For example, the AV1910 is compatible with uh, not only TPE, but also EV, EVA, also uh, copolyesters, also polyurethane. So, Basically, we have we have a polyolefin carrier, and some of the polyolefins are functional in case of a specific final product. Because we also have a polyamide, uh, basic uh, master batch. Uh, this is a, is a is a technology we also motivate from the other business we have. Um, which is your suggestion for UV curable resin acrylic system? Which type of polysuccinate can be? Okay, in, in, in this case, it's important the um, siloxane is reactive because in the, in the, the curable resin acrylic 
uh, will not be compatible with the policy loxane. So it's important to have a reactive policy loxane uh, ready to cure, to be cured together with acrylic to create an homogeneous layer. So uh, our, our uh, additives uh, based on uh, acrylic and uh, our vinyl uh, functional groups will be available for this application. We have also in liquid form, if you want to mix it with your uh, UV curable paint. Which additive can be used for polyamide powder in a, a 3D printing? Ah, okay, in this case, uh, the most suitable, of course, is the AA1142A, uh, which is a high molecular weight silicon mask, silicon additive, uh, predispersed, completely predispersed in polyamide. You, we have also IPN version of this additive, which is a 3D network. Uh, but in this case, uh, the dosage cannot be too much in order to do not affect too much the printability. In the 3D printing, it's very important to have a uh, high fluidity and a high cohesive strength of the single layer of the 3D printer. And uh, if we use IPN, interpenetrating network, you will have better impact but the layer by layer, the adhesion will be reduced. So I recommend the traditional technology AA1142A. Uh, will the silicon additives influence properties like smell or fogging? Oh, not at all, not at all. In, in, uh, in all, all the silicon additives, uh, VOC is uh, almost zero. Um, as I told you, we process the material in twist crest tube at high temperature and we remove everything can be like a residual volatile material. And uh, our uh, additives, pure additives are completely uh, odorless and uh, no color as well and no any taste, <laughs> even if we don't have uh, food approved grades at the moment. So uh, our additives never influenced the, the smell and, and the foggy behavior of, uh, of the final goods. Uh, let me answer to one last question uh, because uh, it's uh, two minutes to the end. I want to uh, thanks everyone and I, I will also uh, reply to all the question uh, by, by email, as I already mentioned. Okay, what silma did you recommend to improve in the abrasion resistance of HDPE PoE cable compound? Oh, that they, 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 <laughs> this is our our main main market main application, which is cable compounds. So for HDPE PoE cable compound silma process A A A L eleven forty two plus. AL, L means uh, based on um, LLDP material, and uh, it will be completely mixable with the HDP and PoE, and the dosage recommended is around 2%. So for, for me at the moment, uh, it's, uh, it's all, and uh, I want uh, again, thanks to everyone, and uh, excuse me if uh, I, I, in my details, I forgot some uh, topics, uh, I will be much more Detail it and and uh, and careful in the written reply by email to all of you. And if you have also other question, please email to us or through uh, UL Prospector platform. Thank you to everyone. Thank you all for attending today's webinar. Just as a reminder, we will send you a link to the recording of today's webinar so you can watch it at any time and share with others at your company. We will also follow up to any questions we weren't able to get to today. Thank you again for attending and have a great day.